I'll be reading James 1, 22 through 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not, but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now, I promise I won't make you stand. I thoroughly enjoy watching our young men stand up here and participate with us in the worship assembly. I look forward to the day where it's just nothing but young men leading the whole worship assembly. So I'm, I'm warning you now, that's going to so get ready, guys. No, um, thank you. I'm going to do my best to stay right here so those that are streaming online, they don't have to, one, Travis doesn't have to take the camera and pan back and forth because I tend to walk if you haven't noticed that before. But I welcome each and every one of you for being here. Thank you for joining with us here in the building and online streaming with us. It's such a joy that we can come together and share in God's word. So this morning, as you can see on the screen, God can use all of us. And so this morning I want to share with you some things that I have been thinking about in regards to how God can use us. I came across the story of Niccolo Paganini. He is an Italian violinist, violist, guitarist, and composer. And he willed his famous violin to the city of Genoa with the condition that it would never be played. And I understand from this story that an instrument such of the violin, when it's properly handled and properly used, it wears very little. But as it stands right now, never being played through all the years, I understand that the wood has become worm-eaten, and it's now nothing more than just a relic. And so I think about us as a church family. I would like to think about life in general as a sport. I was on a Sunday afternoon on our way to lunch with some friends, and that thought came to me. That if we looked at this life we're living right now as if it was a sport of basketball, I would like to think that the year 2020 was halftime. And during halftime, that's when the coach and the team goes into their prospective locker rooms and they discuss the things that have taken place in the first half. The game plans that may have never been achieved. The defensive positions that were never actively involved on or some turnovers that have caused the other team to get ahead. So what if we looked at our spiritual life in the same mind frame and we look at 2020 as halftime? God is our coach. He has looked at us and he has told us, you know what? We have been losing. The other team have been taking advantage and are scoring more points. But at the beginning of the second half, every coach that I've ever played for has always said, at the beginning of the second half, the score is always zero to zero. Doesn't matter if they're way ahead or if you're way ahead, the score is always zero to zero. Because it's going, what matters is, are we going to follow the game plan? Are we going to miss our defensive assignments? Are we going to miss the opportunities to make the play? So as we come together today, I would like to think that year 2021 is the beginning of the second half. God has revealed to us in 2020 the condition of our hearts and our souls and our minds. And so this year, I think we have the responsibility, as Paul says, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus or good works that he has pre prepared beforehand for us to do. Jesus tells us that we're the light of the world. Have we gone out and have we displayed ourselves as a church family as God's workmanship? 
have we gone out as a church family and shown the world that we're the light of the world? So as we begin to evaluate our role as a church, I want us to remember that God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Our past should not dictate who we are, but it should help us to develop who we can become. And as I had Cooper read for us from Judges chapter 6, verses 12 through 14, and for some reason it didn't show up here, Travis, but that's okay. And if you remember that the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, now pay attention, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon hasn't done anything yet. Matter of fact, he's hiding from the Midianites in a wine press, threshing wheat. He does not want the Midianites to come down and take his wheat. But God calls him mighty warrior. And Gideon looks at the angel and he's got this surprised look on his face and he says, but sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Sounds familiar to our life today, doesn't it? We can look back across the year 2020 and we wonder if God is with us, then why is this all happening? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hand of Midian. And here's what the Lord says to Gideon. Go, go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you. Do you see what God has done for Gideon? God knew who Gideon was going to become. And so he identifies Gideon as a mighty warrior before the battle even begins. You see? He's qualifying the called. In Gideon's eyes, he didn't feel qualified. But God knew who Gideon would become. So he identifies him as a mighty warrior. And look, just like Gideon, we do not have to have great power or knowledge for God to use us. But if we commit ourselves to serve him, God will open doors before us. Brothers and sisters, we have been called just as Gideon has. God is qualifying us because he has called us. And so we have to pay attention that with this call, he has invited us. He has invited us to feed on his word to begin with. In the prayer on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. He's not necessarily talking about just physical bread. He's also talking about the spiritual bread. We must eat of the spiritual food to feed the soul. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. To be fed, there must be a hunger to satisfy the need. Peter says, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. So brothers and sisters, when was the last time you were hungry for the God's word? Or have we have filled ourselves with the junk food of the world so that we are no longer hungry for the spiritual food? Have we consumed ourselves with the food that the world has been trying to feed us? Or are we pursuing because we're hungry for the word of God? Not only are do we feed on his word, but we are to apply his word. James says, but the one who peers into the perfect law of liberty 
Look at the highlighted words. Can you see it up there in red? Fixes his attention. But the one who peers into the perfect law of liberty and fixes his attention there and does not become a forgetful listener, but one who, what? Lives it out. He will be blessed in what he does. Do you see where the blessing is at? It's, the blessing is in the one who lives out the word of God, who applies the word of God to their lives. If the word of God is not applied to the heart, there will be no desire to do what the word says. Matter of fact, God tells Moses, you shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Parents, in this particular context, he's talking to us. He's expecting us to impress the words on our hearts in, in such a way as a cattleman would brand his cattle. They would impress the brand on the skin of the cattle until the mark is left there to show ownership. We are to impress the words of God on our hearts in such a way that it leaves that permanent mark of ownership. And then in Luke chapter 11, Jesus says, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So we are to feed on his word, we are to apply his word, and we are to be compassionate for his word. You become what you love. Winnie the Pooh, a wise individual, said, Sometimes the smallest things take the most room in your heart. There's an author by the names of James K. Smith in a book that he wrote, You Are What You Love. He said that our wants and longings and desires are at the core of our identity. The wellspring from which our actions and behavior flow. So, if you had to right now, at this very moment, to walk through a door that offers you, you could have whatever your heart desires, would you walk through that door right now? Would you allow it to reveal to you what your heart desires the most? The psalmist says, my soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. Consumed. There's a passion that I need, I want, and I want to be filled with the word of God. God's not only inviting us, but he's also expecting us. There's an expectation from God. The expectation is to share his word. Matter of fact, he tells Isaiah, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the things for which I sent it. God's word will never sit idle. We are to share his word. We are to be a doer of his word. There is one thing to know what the Bible says, but while doing it is something totally more and totally different. On his last night here on earth, Jesus says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Because one day, brothers and sisters, God's going to call us home and he's going to look at us and he's going to say, well done. You will never hear him say, well said. Come now and enjoy the rewards of your master. 
So are you pursuing a life in such a way that you're hearing God say, well done? And as Evan read for us, I want us to understand that we do not need to kid ourselves. Let's look at this again. For in, if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. James is basically saying that for the church family, I need you to examine your heart. I need you to ask yourselves, am I just a hearer of God's word or am I a doer of God's word? Because if all you are is just a hearer of God's word, you are no, no different from anyone who just sits at home and does nothing but eat. And constantly feeding and eating. And pretty soon their body is so overweight that they can't even get up out of the couch. Let's not become that church that just wants to be fed to where the point that we just become so over -spirit, overweight spiritually we can't even move. James uses this mirror imagery for that purpose, for to get the church community to examine themselves. And failing to consistently examine our hearts will only lead to deceiving ourselves as saying, we're okay. So we have God's invitation. We have God's expectation. And we have God's adjudication, God's judgment. Because God judges the hearts of men. Matter of fact, he tells Samuel, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on at the heart. Our heart will determine the fruit that is produced. Jesus says, thus you will know them by their fruits. So brothers and sisters, as a church, what is our fruit? What fruit have we produced? We can look back at year 2020 and just call it halftime. But what about prior to that? Prior to being stuck at home, what fruit have we produced? Because 2021 has to be different, has to be better. We have to be a community of one mind, one soul, intent on one purpose. God sees through well intentions. James says you can't look at someone in need and then do nothing. Because what good is that? The Hebrew writer says this, for you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, the one who's coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. Pay attention to this. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. God is interested in your obedience, not in your intention to be obedient. We can no longer say, well, I intended to do that. Oh, I intended to say this. Oh, oh I intended, no. We have to do. Because God's going to hold us accountable. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What we do here on earth in the physical is for et eternal glory. What we do now today is for our eternal glory. God gives exactly what you need. We have to display our faith in God by showing it through what we do. 
For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. We could all sit here and go, we believe in God. But you know what? So do the demons. And they shudder in fear. So, I said all that to say this. Let's be involved. Let's be connected. Because what is your passion? God does not make mistakes when it comes to placing people right where they are. You are here, brothers and sisters, whether you're watching online or whether you're right here in the building, God has not made a mistake by placing you here. God gives exactly what you need to do what he calls you to do. I know. I can look out in this group here, and most likely for those of you that are watching online, I can know for sure that not everyone's passions are the same. Each of our passions are different. But those passions have to come together, work together for the glory of Jesus Christ. And just as you walk out into the foyer, you might have seen that, I almost said billboard, but it's about the size of a billboard, a bulletin board. And you're going to see the different ministries. Because you know what? God has a spot for you. It doesn't matter what your age is. God has a spot for you. It doesn't matter if you have taught many years ago and you think, well, my kids are grown, I'm gone, I'm retired from my work. God has a spot for you. Because God's retirement plan is not here on earth. Think of the wisdom that you have that you can share with the younger ones. For those of you that have stopped teaching, continue to teach. For those that have felt like I can't serve, there's a spot for you. Maybe you don't know for sure what that spot is. Maybe you don't know for sure what your ability is. Ask God to reveal those gifts to you. Ask him to help you to develop them. Then be sensitive to the ways in which you might receive further training in your area of talent. You'll never know if you can't do something until you try to do it. You tell a basketball player to shoot the ball, but if he doesn't shoot it, he'll never know if it's going to go in. So this morning, I've asked the young men to hand out some passionate inventory forms. Because maybe your passion has changed. Maybe you've never filled out a passion inventory form let us know what your passion is because we want to put the round pegs into the round holes we don't want you to come up and say i would love to serve great go work in the children's ministry and then you go i don't like kids that's not a good place for you i want to serve great then come up here and lead prayer. Oh, no, that's not what I'd like to do either. Maybe you're the one, behind, what I call behind the scenes. You're the encourager who could write a card, who could write a letter, who can make a phone call. But you don't know what you're capable of doing until you step out and do it. Well, that's out of my comfort zone. Well, guess what? When you make one step out of the comfort zone, your comfort zone hasn't shrunk, it has expanded. If anything that 2020 has done for us has shown us what we're afraid of. Let's stop being afraid. Let's start living and working for God. Because the church works when we are working. 
Remember I told you, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So don't wait until you're an expert. Part of the way to become an expert is start using your talents for God's purposes. God has never stopped working. He only rested from his creative work. Jesus said there in John chapter 5, verse 17, my father is still working, and I also am working. God will not give you a talent and then fail to give you opportunities for discovering, using, developing, practicing, and perfecting that talent. Remember what Paul said, that we are his workmanship. God created us in Christ Jesus to do that work. What is that work? The good works. He has already laid them out. He is just waiting for us to join in with him. So I'm going to ask you right now, how many of you have ever filled out one of these passion inventory forms? The last time we did it was 2016, brothers and sisters. And if you're watching us online, you can get that link at our website. We need to know. I'm looking at you right now. Get the passion inventory form. Show us what you love to do because you know what it is about the church? It's not about what you get. It's about what you give. Are you ready to give? If you are, then let's get busy. And as I close, I want you to pay attention. Hopefully it's the statements on there. No, it's not. Let me, let me give you this statement that I found many years ago. It's, it's been in my notes for I don't know how long. But it, this, here's what it says. You will never feel good about your life until you are functioning in the severe for which you were created. For example, birds in the air, fish in water, man in a close fellowship with his creator. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to get busy. Let's not kid ourselves by thinking that as long as I'm here on Sunday morning and I'm getting the word of God fed to me, and if that's all you do, you're going to become spiritually obese. Let's take what we receive and go do, share, but let's work together. We are a community. The Christian life is not about individuals. It's about the community. Let's come together and let's get busy. If there's anything we can do, come now while we stand and sing.